Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect. And today we're going to be taking a look at how you can use secrets management with Key Vault and integrate that with Azure Kubernetes services. Before we get lost in the weeds on this, let's take a look at what it looks like visually and the flow of what actually happens. So with Azure Kubernetes Services, you have a VM scale set that represents an, an agent pool on your VM cluster, on your Azure Kubernetes cluster, and this is what's responsible for managing and running all of your pods. Now that VM scale set will have with it associated a managed identity from Azure. Now an Azure managed identity is a identity that corresponds to something in Azure Active Directory. It's some kind of object that works like a service account in the context of AD. And that managed service identity will be able to manage that identity. So whenever you create it in Azure Resource Manager, it will create the corresponding object in Azure AD. And then whenever you remove that Azure managed identity or remove the object inside of Azure AD as well. And this was created to prevent having to have two steps to clean up resources in Azure or to manage those resources in Azure separately through two different workflows. So you can use a managed identity to connect that to that Azure resource, which is managed in, as we said, Azure Active Directory. So once the the VM scale set goes and asks for that managed identity, it's going to go out to Azure Active Directory and pull back that identity and then present it back to the VM scale set. And that will be available then for the VM scale set to use. The next thing that happens is the VM scale set will then go to Key Vault and present a token to that Key Vault. Now, the Key Vault will then be associated with that Azure Active Directory and itself will go out and validate that token against Azure Active Directory. It'll look at the token and get a response back from the Azure Active Directory to validate, okay, is this person who they say they are by way of that token? And once that validation has happened, then the uh, Key Vault can then serve up secrets to that VM scale set. And that VM scale set will then expose whatever secret data is being passed from the Key Vault back to the pod by way of a volume mount. And that volume mount will be made available inside the pod as a file that can be read by whatever application is in need of the secret that is actually in Key Vault. I am here in the Azure portal now, and I have for me the resource group that contains my Kubernetes service and my Key Vault. We're going to do a deep dive into the Kubernetes service in just a second, but I wanted to take a look at this Key Vault first to show you that I actually created a secret here. Now, I created this secret called MySQL password because what I'm going to deploy here in a moment is the actual WordPress instance that's going to read this secret. And I'm going to have two pods in play that will read this secret. Similar to what we did with Kubernetes managed secrets, but I'm going to use Key Vault in this case. So once I have this created and I have my key created, you can create these easily just by adding one here. Uh, and I have my key vault ready to go. I'm going to have to connect my Kubernetes service to this. But when I create a key Kubernetes service, there's an option that I need to make sure that I check whenever I create this. You can also add this after the Kubernetes service is created. It is an option to use a managed identity once the Kubernetes cluster is created. So whenever you walk through this particular wizard here to create a Kubernetes cluster in the vault in the portal, you would want to select a system assigned managed identity here, and you would uh, want to make sure that's checked so that the managed identity would be created once the Azure Kubernetes services instance has been created. Now, if you didn't do this when you created your cluster, you can go back and add one later. And the documentation for that is available on Microsoft uh, on how to create that identity and associate it with your Kubernetes cluster. But it makes it a lot easier if you're creating a new cluster just to go ahead and check that right there. And once that's deployed, you will actually get that managed identity as a resource. Now, it's not going to be exposed inside of this particular resource group here. And that's because whenever you create a Kubernetes service on Azure, it actually creates another resource group that contains all of the managed resources that Azure Kubernetes services uses to run whatever you're doing inside of your managed instance. And that would be the usually a resource group that looks like this, MC underscore. 
and it's usually going to have some kind of name associated with it, similar to whatever you named your um, your Azure Kubernetes service instance whenever you created it. Now, here you're going to see a lot of various resources here, and these are all managed through the APIs that are associated with your Kubernetes cluster. And you really don't have to touch any of this uh, infrastructure. It's mostly something that is available to you if you need to. But in the case of managed identities and using those with service principles and key vault, you need to get the managed identity that was created whenever you created your cluster. And you'll see here I have a managed identity created inside of this resource group. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to, I can use this managed identity or I could use uh, this one right here or this one right here. So I have uh, a number of different ones that I can use. You could check on, click on this. And this one is the one that you want to use with your agent pool. So it's going to be associated with that particular managed identity. And you can come over here and grab the client ID because you'll need that later. Or you could use another one of the managed identities. The, the, the actual one that you end up using is really less important, but the one that you probably want to use would be one of the, the ones associated with your agent pool. So once you have that uh, presented to you and you have that client ID, save that off and paste it into a text editor, and then you can use that to connect to your Azure uh, Key Vault that is part of your uh, other resource group that is associated with this particular Azure Kubernetes service. The next thing you'll want to get is the tenant ID associated with your uh, Key Vault here and your managed identity. So you want to come down here to Azure Active Directory, and you can simply copy and paste that from the overview for your Azure Active Directory. Once you have your client ID from your managed instance, which is going to look something like this, you can connect that to your key vault using a Azure CLI command. You can do this in Cloud Shell or from your desktop. So you would basically paste in after SPN here, and then you would have your client ID associated with your managed identity. The next thing that you need is the name of your key vault, which again, that's fairly easy to get from the Azure portal. And you would put that after the dash N parameter. Now, what you're trying to get here is either keys, secrets, or certificates. That's basically the only difference between each of these commands here. So this one is for key permissions. This one is for secret permissions. And this one right here is for certificate permissions. And for our cases, we're, we're going to be using a secret. And so that's really what we're trying to get at here is using a secret inside of Key Vault for our particular demo here. So once you have that command, you can do, take that and then run it against your Azure CLI. I'm here inside of my terminal and I've already connected Azure CLI here to Azure using the AZ login. I'm going to paste in the command for secrets into my prompt here, and then I'm going to run that. And this will take a few seconds to provision my Key Vault to set that policy. And once it's done, you'll see something that looks like this called succeeded. Now, before we can run this, we need to run a few commands against Kubernetes to install the Flex Volume Driver for Key Vault into Kubernetes. And you can simply do a couple of create commands to do that. So I'm going to copy this command here and then come down here to my terminal and paste it in. And it, I've already created this, so it's going to tell me that's already there. But uh, given that it's already there, you, uh, I don't need to recreate it, but I'm just showing you that it already created it. But that's the command you would run. And similarly, this would be the, the same uh, case here, but this is an apply, so it's going to update some things and it's unchanged because I've already run these commands against this particular uh, instance of Azure Kubernetes services. But because this is unchanged and because I've already created, I'm getting some exceptions. But if you haven't done that, you would see some output telling you it was successful. So to recap what we've done, it, we've created an Azure Kubernetes services. And as part of that deployment, we created a managed identity. We created a key vault. We put a secret in that key vault, and then we connected our managed identity to that key vault. And then we installed the drivers on our Azure Kubernetes services. So once all of that has been done, we can actually use that key vault inside of our Azure Kubernetes services inside of a pod. So to make this work, I'm going to use my BusyBox secret pod again to expose a secret to my uh, pod through a flex volume. And to do that, it's pretty straightforward, like we saw with you know, secrets already, where we have a mount point inside of our manifest file. And then we have down here the options for that, that mount point, which is exposes a flex volume here. So what we need to do is specify the driver here. 
and we want to say use managed identity, set that to true. Uh, we're going to set our managed identity client ID here, and that is going to be the managed same client ID that we used whenever we connected our key vault to our managed identity. And we also need the key vault name, which is the same key vault that we connected our client ID to as well. And then we'll want to use the object name, which is going to be the secret that we created in our key vault. And we give it a type of secret. And then uh, the tenant ID is the tenant ID for the managed identity. So that would be the Azure Active Directory tenant ID. And we've already seen how to get that. So once you have all of this into your manifest file, you can create an Azure uh, Kubernetes service pod and it should have access to that key vault and you should be able to access the secret. So let's go ahead and deploy this and see what happens. So I'm here back in my terminal and I'm going to get a list of the files here. So if I do LS, you can see that I have secret stash KV. That's the first one I'm going to run. So let's go ahead and create this. So I'm going to go kube, um, kube CTL create dash F and then specify the key vault the secrets and that will create the pod. So let's see how that status looks and it's running already. So now I'm going to get into that because I want to see where the secret is created. So kubectl exec and I'm going to do dash IT and then I'm going to specify the name of the pod that I'm going to get into and then the command that I want to run and that should give me a prompt inside of the pod. So ls just to see where i'm at okay it's you see ett and then i can go to the mysql um, password folder and that's where i mounted the particular secret and there's the actual file that got created from key vault so if i do cat on that we should see uh, password one two three which was the secret that i created inside of key vault so with that i can now use this same technology to deploy something that's more like an app. So in this case, I'm going to use WordPress. So let's go ahead and take a look at that YAML file and see what that looks like. So we looked at how to use a secret inside of a WordPress demo last time, and we did a video. Uh, we used a environment variable to create the actual secret from a Kubernetes managed secret. But in this case, I'm going to use that flex volume inside of Kubernetes and I'm going to use it inside of my pod and I'm going to configure WordPress to access that as well as MySQL, which is the database behind it. So pretty much everything in this particular file is the same as what we saw before. The main difference is that instead of using an environment variable to get the password, I'm going to use a password from a file, which we saw was inside of this mount path here. So what I'm going to tell my WordPress and my MySQL instance here is to use a file to pick up the root password instead of an environment variable. So the container here is going to look for an environment variable that either has my root password or my root password underscore file as a pointer to wherever that file might be. So in this case, I'm going to use this environment variable to tell my container where that file is going to be mounted inside of the file system. So this is where I'm going to actually mount that secret so that my MySQL instance can pick that root password up. So once I have that set for my environment variable, I need to set a mount point so that that particular secret gets mounted there. And I'm going to do that with a volume mount here from my KV demo volume that we've already seen a demo of already. And I'm going to say the mount path, that's the root of where these secrets will be mounted from. And to make all that work, I'm going to point to my KV demo volume down here, which is exactly what we saw with a second ago inside of that BusyBox demo. So I basically just copied and pasted it into this particular demo, and it's got all the same parameters. So I'm going to be getting out that object name, MySQL uh, password here, and then that's the secret that's going to get exposed inside of my MySQL uh, container. And the same thing down here with my WordPress container, I'm going to use, again, that same kind of a scenario where I'm using a file to determine the root password for my database. And I'm also going to be using a flex volume right here, the same uh, flex volume that I used otherwise. And I'm going to use the same parameters for this particular flex volume, you know, just like I did for my MySQL instance above. So both of these uh, containers will be reading the same secret. So one of them is getting it so it can set the container up. The second one is getting it so that it can install 
the software once that container has that MySQL container has been created and I go to uh, log into it. So let's go back down here to my terminal and let's go ahead and run this and let's deploy this to my Kubernetes cluster. So if I go kubectl and get pods, we'll probably see the old pod still there, that secrets pod. So I can do a ls on this folder to show you that th I'm in that folder with my uh, key vault YAML file here. So let's do a kube ctl dash uh, create dash f and let's do wordpress and i want to do the key vault demo here and let's go ahead and run that and we'll come back whenever this creates because it's going to take a second to create those persistent volumes for the external data so I have my WordPress and my MySQL pods created. You, I know that these have been successful, at, at least the MySQL pod has been successful because it's actually up and running because if you create a MySQL pod from a container image on Docker Hub and you use one of the default images, if you don't have the root password set as an environment variable or as a secret that has been mounted as a file or just a file that you inject into the actual uh, container image, whenever you write that, it will not start the pod and it will not start the container. It will crash and you'll get caught in a reboot loop or whatever it might be for that particular pod. But given that this one is running, I know that that has been successful. And the proof's in the pudding though. So if I log on to my WordPress pod and I don't see any kind of prompt for any kind of credentials for the database, I know that my WordPress container was successfully able to connect to my WordPress container by way of that secret I supplied it. So let's go get the service here. So I can do kubectl get service and get the IP address for my WordPress instance here. So I'm gonna copy that and then launch a browser window here. And I can simply go to new window and paste this in as HTTP colon slash slash, and then start my WordPress install here. And since I'm coming to this welcome screen here where it's just asking me for the title of my blog or whatever it might be, um, I can then use, I know that I'm not getting any kind of prompt for the actual uh, database credentials. That way I know this has been connected to my database successfully. And I'm gonna confirm weak password here, connect to this and uh, install WordPress. And this site will take a few seconds to deploy, but once that's done, I should be able to log in with my username there. Let's go ahead and log in with that and that super secure password that I typed in. And um, here's my my admin panel, and this is reading everything out of that database. And I can come over here to the secret website, and this is pulling all these page uh, metadata off of the database as well. So we, here we see our demo working. I've used a secret to successfully install an application, in this case, WordPress, into uh, an instance running on Azure Kubernetes services. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.